If you've been using a DSLR for your astrophotography, it's probably time for you to make a change. While many people use DSLR cameras as a cheaper introduction to astrophotography, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's the best option. Thankfully for people like me, who don't have unlimited funds for astrophotography, ZWO has created their most affordable, dedicated cold camera yet. And that camera is a ZWO ASI 585MC Pro camera. Now, why is this camera better than your DSLR for astrophotography? Well, let's look at one of the most obvious things. DSLR cameras cannot be cooled, meaning that if you want to take longer exposures, you are more likely to run into things like dark noise or hot pixels, which can be extremely difficult to edit out and oftentimes leave you feeling like I did. Okay. Yeah. That looks like you're about to cry. Plus, unless you astro modify your DSLR camera, you wouldn't have the same dynamic range or quantum efficiency as you would with an astro dedicated cooled camera. But why use the 585 MC Pro? What makes this camera better than the other cameras? Noise. One of the most aggravating things that you can run into when doing astrophotography is noise. And if you have a camera that generates too much noise while taking longer exposures, you might as well just throw it away. Remember, bad cameras make bad images no matter how good of a telescope you have. But how about the 585 MC Pro? Well, this camera was specifically designed to be used with high gain at short exposures while reducing noise with its built-in HGC mode. HGC mode turns on when you reach a gain level of 252, and when that activates, you practically have the same amount of dynamic range as you would at gain zero, all while maintaining the noise level as low as 0.7e. That's pretty good, right? How about quantum efficiency? A cheap DSLR, such as the Canon Rebel T7, has a quantum efficiency of only 51%. While this is not bad, it's certainly not ideal for astrophotography. And for an unmodified DSLR, this quantum efficiency is quite high when you compare it to other DSLR cameras. But what about the 585MC Pro? The 585MC Pro has a quantum efficiency peaking at 91%. That's a 40% increase on how well certain wavelengths of light are able to be captured by your camera sensor. And that 40% can make a huge difference, especially when you're shooting under light polluted skies. The 585MC Pro has a pixel size of 2.9. That's a great choice for telescopes with a focal length ranging from 300 millimeters to 800 millimeters. That is a great range for those who are just getting started in astrophotography and are looking to get more detail on the larger deep sky objects in the night sky. It has a high resolution of 3840 by 2160, meaning that it has a rectangular sensor which is optimized for people like me who like to display their astrophotography images on YouTube and on Instagram. Of course, it doesn't have to be used on nebula and galaxies alone. Since it was made with a USB 3.0 port, which allows for faster data transferring and a max of 40 frames per second, it's also a great choice for recording and stacking planetary surfaces or even the moon. But keep in mind, any details that you would be able to pull out would mainly depend on the focal length of your telescope. Let's take a look at a couple images taken with this camera when paired with a small aperture telescope. Beginning first with the Pelican Nebula. When I first saw the data from the Pelican Nebula on my laptop screen, I was shocked. It was the biggest difference in contrast that I had ever seen. All that I had used before for deep sky imaging was DSLR cameras such as Canon Rebel T7 mentioned before and a planetary camera made by ZWO. Don't get me wrong, these are both really great cameras, but they're just not made for what I wanted to use them for, which is deep sky ash photography. And once I actually saw the difference between cooled and uncooled cameras, I knew I could never go back to uncooled cameras. I was hooked. Despite it being only about four hours of exposure time, the amount of details that were able to be pulled out of the image were amazing. And I had never seen anything like it. Also, as mentioned before, it was way easier to process simply because the images were just almost noise free. I had the same kind of feeling when I imaged Caldwell 30 and Stefan's Quintet. Obviously, with the telescope I had, I didn't have enough focal length to get a lot of detail on this object. But the fact that this camera can so easily make these faint deep sky objects appear, despite being magnitude 15, under Bortle 5 skies, it just blew me away. This camera is priced at $599, and the link to the camera is included in the description below. It's listed on several different sites, so you can choose which one is best for you depending on the shipping costs and your location. 
Let me know what you think about this camera down below in the comments. And if you found this video helpful or at least mildly enjoyable, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe to help support the channel. And as always, I wish you all clear skies.